Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Just a quick mention, my game is finally coming out on Monday. I'm still really hard at work on it. I've been working pretty much 16 hour days these past two weeks. I really want the game to be good, I really hope you'll enjoy it. And another thing, normally I split these asset videos in three, one for each type, but since this month has been really intense, both because of working on my game and of course the whole Unity pricing thing, that really messed up my whole schedule. So I merged all three in just this one video. Here is the list of top three assets, then the systems and tools, and finally visions and effects. Also, if you need some assets, there's a new home bundle with a ton of Cinti assets. So if you're a fan of the low poly style, you've got tons of stuff here. You've got the Horror Mansion for a bunch of spooky stuff, Sci-Fi City, which I'm actually using a bunch of these in my own game, the High Spec, this one is super useful, has lots of weapons and a really interesting environment, one for Samurai, Vikings, Western, Apocalypse, and so on. As usual, these bundles are always great deals, so this is like 97% off for just 20 bucks, so if you need assets, go ahead and get it. Okay, so here are the top 10 free new assets. Alright, so onto the top 10 list, starting off with a gorgeous looking fantasy map. It looks really great. This could be taken straight from your Lord of the Rings game or something like that. It's a modular pack with tons of pieces, so lots of icons for forests, mountains and so on, as well as various symbols for castles, quests, enemies, villages and more. It definitely requires artistic skill to put the final map together, but this is a great starting point. Next, for an interesting tool, here's a way to send emails directly from inside your Unity build. Like the name says, this one is super Super simple and it includes all of the source code. So this would be a great research asset. If you want to see all of the code behind how to manually connect to an SMTP server and send an email, you can define the subject, body, you can send to multiple recipients, you can send HTML and even send some attachments. So for example, this could be great to build a feedback form directly inside your game or maybe some automated emails when something happens. Next for some visuals, here are some nice pieces to make some gorgeous alien worlds. These are simple low poly assets and you have just enough pieces to make quite a nice world. You could even technically recolor it with different colors and just with this one asset pack you can make multiple worlds. It comes with a demo scene preset so you can easily try it out. Then for another simple tool, here is a missing reference finder. This does exactly what the name says. If you've ever seen those annoying messages in the console telling you that some game object is missing a script reference, then you know it's impossible to know what object is throwing that message. This tool basically helps solve that. Just one button to search and it shows all the results, nice and simple. Next, if you're making some car game, here's a nice visual pack. It's got a very nice variety of cars. So you have a general sedan, you've got some muscle cars, there's a Jeep, an exotic, and even an F1 car. These are relatively low poly, so you can easily recolor them to get tons of variation. Then if you'd like to keep a to-do list, but without having to use an external website, check out this one. This looks extremely feature complete. You can easily define tasks that you want to do. You can group them by type in any way you want. You can mark them as complete or incomplete. Easily view the progress for each grouping and also lets you add all kinds of references so you easily know what script or what folder that task refers to. If you find this one useful, this dev has a pro version with a bunch more features. And up next for a nice runtime console, here's one. It feels like lately every month there's at least one excellent console. I guess that's great for developers who want excellent free tools. A console like this one is one of the most useful tools you can have. This one seems to be very well built with lots of features. It even includes the ability to easily add your own commands with just one simple attribute. Or maybe you just want a visual character, if so, here's a nice one with a giant hand. It includes the character model as well as some animations and particle effects. The proportions look a bit strange, but the hand does look quite cool. Then if you like playing with colors, here's a color palette tool. You basically define some colors, you give them names and assign the color itself, then you can easily swap out all the colors with one button click. So for example, on a multiplayer game, you could have one palette for the player one, maybe something in blue, and then another red color palette for player two. Or you can just go crazy and randomize all the colors, maybe that also works. And if you'd like to make a super simple internet connection, check out this simple UDP tool. This is a very simple implementation. You've got a very, very small packet size. You can send some unreliable data with just one byte. It includes all of the source code. So again, this one would be great if you'd like to research and see how all this works. A tool like this one can be quite useful if you're making a non-game application in Unity and you want to make just a simple bare bones connection, like perhaps just connecting your PC to your mobile phone through a local network to build perhaps some kind of interesting electronics project. Okay, so now onto the list of top systems and tools. All right, so starting off with a nice tool to add something that almost always makes your game look better. It's real-time global illumination. If you've ever looked at your own games and wondered why it doesn't look as good as the games you play, chances are lighting is the big difference. Without global illumination, things that are in the shade are completely black, but in reality, light bounces, so even something in the shade still has some color. This tool lets you easily add global illumination in a really fast way. It's easy to add, fully compatible with URP, you can customize everything, and works on all platforms. Next, for a simple tool to 
greatly improve your UI, here is SDF Image. Unity already has a built-in outline and shadow component, but those are really basic. That one is really just meant for quick prototypes, it really does not look good in many scenarios. Whereas this one, on the other hand, this one looks absolutely excellent. It uses SDF, so the outlines are super high quality, they're all extremely detailed. It doesn't matter if your sprite has rounded corners or sharp edges, this looks good in every scenario. You can easily tint the outline in any color, you can set any thickness you want, you can add shadows and set direction, you just simply use a different component and play around with all the properties in the shader. So a really simple, really excellent tool, I think I might get this one to polish my game Dinky Gardens. Then for a very advanced, very complex tool, here is RNG Needs. This is the ultimate probability distribution plugin for Unity. Right away it looks really intimidating, a mountain of numbers and percentages, but if you're making some kind of complex RPG with tons of loot and drop changes, then you definitely do want a complex tool just like this one. And despite being so complex, it has custom inspectors to make it really easy to use. You can easily drag some bars to define drop rates, there's no need to manually write numbers, so if your game has lots of chance and drop rates, then definitely get this one. Next, if you have some projectiles and you want them to move in interesting ways, check out this one. You can fire projectiles in weird shapes while making them follow the path to the target perfectly, so they don't have to just go straight. You can define some weird curves for them to follow, maybe you can even define a fixed amount of time to reach the target regardless of distance. Whatever settings you choose, you can also predict where the projectile will go. And also, a projectile doesn't have to be just a bullet, that can also be your player so you can see when you jump, where will the player land. It's quite an interesting tool if you have some idea where it involves tons of projectiles that do more than just go straight. Next, if you're working in VR and you'd like to draw something, then check out this asset. It is very simple and does exactly what you expect. You can pick up a bunch of pens with various colors and draw whatever you want. You can use the eraser if you make some kind of mistake. Optionally, you can also save the image onto a file. It's all using compute shaders, so this is all very performant. I could see this being a great addition for pretty much any VR game. Even if your game is something like a shooter, you can just easily add this to some part in your world to make it a tiny bit more unique. Then, if you're working with animations and you want to avoid that transition spaghetti, check out this one. This is motion matching. It's a different way to handle your animations. Instead of fixed transitions, you have some dynamic movement of your character, and then the system automatically picks which animation best fits that movement. So this is the kind of thing that a lot of AAA games use, games like Assassin's Creed where they always have those dynamic animations, this is the kind of thing they use. This can make the character feel much more natural, but also sometimes looks a little bit janky. Either way, it's definitely an interesting different method. If you're tired of dealing with massive amounts of transitions, then maybe try this out. Next, here's a fun and simple tool for making light poles. Now this is an extremely simple level building tool. If your world has some kind of electrical poles, you can just place them and it will automatically draw the connections. It's really simple, it has some randomness so it looks a bit more natural and it seems to work pretty well. You just drop the poles in your world and you don't have to worry about individually modeling all kinds of wires. Everything just spawns automatically, all of them get connected. Then, if you have some performance issues, here's a tool to help you combine and merge meshes and materials. If you have tons of unique meshes and tons of unique materials, that is going to be pretty heavy on the GPU. So a tool like this one merges multiple objects into just one, which can be quite a massive performance boost. It automatically recalculates the UVs and creates the final texture combining all of them. So with just one click, you can take multiple objects and merge them into just a single one. Then here's one asset for all of your sensing needs, basically a collection of a ton of raycasts and different cast sensors. This looks really complex, but also really capable. If your game involves tons of positional logic, like for example knowing if the character has a ceiling above it, or perhaps if the character is near a wall or has a box in front or something, doing all of those individual raycasts in code can be quite tricky, so this tool helps to solve that. It features a custom inspector, so you can easily set up and enable or disable each virtual collider. It features an insane amount of shapes. You've got simple rays, you've got box colliders, some capsules, arcs, radiuses, even some sight and sound detection. It's a really great tool to make it easier to manage all of your colliders and collisions. Then for a really simple useful tool, here is a performance monitor. It is very simple, it does exactly what you expect. You can easily monitor the frame rate, the memory usage, CPU and GPU use, how many vertices, how many draw calls, triangles and so on. It's super easy to add, you just drag and drop a prefab and that's it. Then you can easily view this data anywhere. So this can be while playing in the editor or on a PC build or on mobile. Okay, so now onto the list of top visuals and effects.
Alright, so starting off with a gorgeous nature environment, this is one of those where if you have a prototype you're working on, you can just use this demo scene directly and you instantly have a great world to explore. This features a nice low poly style with some highly optimized foliage. Or perhaps you need some explosions, if so here's a great pack, they all look really gorgeous, personally I love the stylized look, you have some fiery explosions with lots of glow, lots of fire, but then you also have some that are just smoke. So this could also be useful if for example your character jumps from a high position into a puddle of mud, you could spawn one of these. Then if you're making a shooting game, you probably need some pistol animations. If so, look at this complete pack. It's an extremely complete animation pack. In total, it's got 65 pistol animations. There's multiple shooting types, you've got turn animations, lots of reloads, pickups, and even some melee attacks. You can of course then combine this with some IK to make it feel really natural. Next here's a really gorgeous pirate port city. Just a few days ago, the excellent game Shadow Gambit just came out. This asset looks like it could be taken straight from that game. It's got lots of modular pieces so you can build anything you like. You can build various port cities or you can even build entire ships. If you're making some kind of stylized pirate game then this is definitely the perfect pack. Or perhaps you're into something much more futuristic. If so here is the latest Sinti pack. This one is all about mechs. Personally I really love this pack. It's got lots of customization. Every mech is so unique. It's got tons of modular parts, you can build mechs with huge machine guns or some huge heavy swords. When I first saw this pack, it immediately made me want to build some kind of game with this, but I'm currently already insanely busy, so perhaps maybe after I finish Dinky Gardens. And if you've got mechs, then maybe you also want some cyberpunk characters to go along with it, so look at this pack. They are extremely customizable, you've got tons of pieces to make essentially infinite variations. With just this one pack, you could randomize tons of characters and populate an entire world with hundreds of unique NPCs. It's a really nice style, I could also see this as a great pack for a multiplayer game with a ton of player customization. Then if you'd like to dissolve something, here is a nice kit with a ton of dissolve effects. Everything from the standard ones to dissolving with some particles, you've got some dissolve with burn, some that go backwards and resolve, and a bunch more. All of them look really great with tons of particles, this one really showcases the power of the VFX wrap. Next if you're working on a 2D shooter and you need some great animated characters, check out this one. These are body part animations, so these are not sprite sheets. Because of that they look really fluid. Each character has 14 animations. Looking at this, it immediately reminds me of a bunch of Flash games. Back when I was making those, I always wanted to build an animation system just like this one. It's really amazing how nowadays all you have to do is just pick this one pack and you have some gorgeous 2D animations. Then here's another one that is also something that I've always wanted to do. It's a pack with a ton of low poly gym assets. Personally, I've always wanted to make some kind of gym tycoon game, although I don't think there's a big audience for that, so I never made it. This one includes pretty much every single prop you could possibly need. You've got various characters, you've got some treadmills, tons of machines and free weights. It also includes lots of props for doing some martial arts. If I had a time machine, I would definitely pause time right now to spend six months making a gym tycoon game with this one pack. Somewhat related to that, here is a Muay Thai animation pack. The animations are definitely stylized, they look really powerful. This dev always has some excellent animations, features lots of impressive kicks, punches and knees. With a nice combat system and these animations, you could definitely make something really special. If instead of melee, your game has swords, then check out these sword slashes VFX. Lots of variation to look like all kinds of elements, so you've got some that look like fire slashes, some look somewhat arcane, you've got frost, holy, void and a bunch more. It includes the slashes, some lunges and some impact VFX. Then if you need to get a better sky for your game, here is a procedural generated one. The demo scene looks really gorgeous, it's got tons of settings so you can get it looking exactly as you want, and this pack includes not just the skybox but the water as well. Or perhaps you're making an FPS game, if so then you've probably already noticed that you need some great animations for the weapons. There's tons and tons of third person animation packs but not that many in first person, so this is a great one. It includes 20 animated weapons alongside a first person player controller, so you've got everything from rifles to shotguns to pistols and some sniper rifles. If those are too realistic for you, then here's a stylized pack. Really a massive amount of variety. In total, you've got 61 weapons. They feature pretty much any type you can think of. And since these are all low poly, you could also easily recolor them. Then for a very unique, very strange character, here is a mech wheel. It's certainly very unique, I've never seen anything like this. It's a giant blade wheel, but then it also has some spider legs. This could be either a very strange enemy in your game, or who knows, perhaps you, this could even be the player character in some strange game. Next, if all you need are just some impacts, then here's a nice pack with nothing but impacts. 
It's got 10 unique impacts with 4 color variations. So as always, it's up to you to the developer to define what each color represents. Then here's a really fun one. It's a bunch of generic sci-fi screens. Very unique pack. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. It's a bunch of looping videos. So these are perfect to add to the background of various rooms in your game. Some look very sci-fi, others look very medical, or even like they belong in a detective show. This is definitely one of those things that really helps add polish to really make your levels feel very lived in. Next, if your game has lots of electricity, then here's a pack with tons of effects. You've got lots of explosions, some auras, buffs, beams, and lasers. All of them look really nice. They come in plenty of colors for you to use in any way you want. Then if your game has a level on some industry side, check out this one. It's some kind of mining industry. Industry. So you've got lots of giant trucks, you've got some trains and some super heavy machinery. This looks really complete. It's really cool, definitely makes me want to make some kind of mining management game. Then here is something that looks sick and straight out of Elden Ring. It's a giant, very fancy castle. It's got lots of white, lots of gold. It's made up of modular pieces so you can easily build your own. Okay, so that's all the top new assets for the month of September. Like I mentioned, I'm really hard at work on my Steam game. I really hope you'll enjoy it. Stay tuned for this Monday. And if you need visuals for your games, check out the Cinti Humble Bundle.